I want to share with you a very deep mystery. There is a law that works upon this earth that there will always be an interplay in every man's life of seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. In ministry, it will happen. In business, it will happen. In marriage, in your family, it will happen. No matter how godly or how ungodly you are, there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will stop these seasons from happening. These are laws. Right now, it's dark. It's a stupid thing to stand and be praying against darkness for no cause. Rather, you look for torchlight. And you don't buy that torchlight necessarily in the night. You buy it during the day. Businessmen have broken this law. And so after building empires for years, they do not know how to last. And at the end of their life, you see them victims of the seven years of famine. It swallows up everything. Some of them are our parents. You open their CVs and you are surprised. You once went abroad? Yes, sir. You once shook hand with the then military head of state? Yes, sir. You once studied in Harvard? Yes. Where are those achievements? The seven years of famine. Please hear what I teach you tonight. Let me give you the wisdom that will cause you to last. There are sportsmen in this country who are still alive. There, were, there was a time their name was synonymous to honor and breakthrough. But they did not discern the mystery in Pharaoh's dream. And it is painful in your lifetime to watch the years of famine come and eat up the years of your abundance. The Bible says Pharaoh said, no, I won't keep quiet. There is something about this dream that if I don't pay attention to understand, the end of my life may become a memorial that will not be desired. Genesis chapter 41 contains a very, very interesting story. And in that story is a mystery. The mystery holds the key to transgenerational relevance. The seven good cows have nothing to do with animals. They are talking of seasons. That's the first revelation. Don't let the cows confuse you, he said. Uh-uh. It's not about animals. It's about seasons. The seven good cows are seven years. And the seven good heads of grain are also seven years. So the spirit of revelation was coming to Pharaoh to teach him something about seasons. That this is not about animals. This is a king who goes to bed and comes up with a dream. Then a young Hebrew boy is invited to his palace. And he says, oh king, this dream has nothing to do with cows, nothing to do with plants. This is a mystery in the kingdom that it talks about years. That the way the earth works, the way God designed this system to work, is that there will always, always be night after day. Then there will be day after night. Hmm. Then there will be night again. As far as we know, in the last 6,000 years plus, no activity on earth has sustained the power to break that law indefinitely. A few times it was manipulated. But that law was still in place. And it says, oh king, even though you are a king of a great country, understand this mystery so that your relevance will remain. If you do not understand it, a day will come, nobody will remember that there was once Pharaoh seated on the throne. Look up please. I want to share with you a very deep mystery. If you do not understand this, no matter what your achievements are today, no matter what height you rise to in life, if you cannot decipher the dream of Pharaoh, you will not last in this kingdom. The Bible tells us that the memory of the just is blessed. It's not just the mind, the thinking, the memory, that there is something about the just 
and God's ability to preserve his good hand and his workings upon their lives. Our life and history is full of people who did not pay attention to this dream. And whether or not you understand the dream, it does not stop what will happen from happening. Listen to me. There will always be seven years of plenty. And that after seven years of plenty, what followed was seven years of famine. And that the years of famine does not leave the years of plenty alone. That something in your future can pursue something in your yesterday and eat it up. Goodness. Why will my future not face its front and turn to the past? I want to eat up your achievements. Want to eat up your, the mighty things that you have done. Notice what the Bible says. That the seven years of famine are so vicious. No matter the size of the cow, they can eat it up. My God. So when I look at your life, all I see is seven lean cows left. Where are the fat ones? Where are the achievements? Where are the mighty things you did in ministry? Where are the exploits in business? What suddenly happened? Africa did not know this. So when we were celebrating gold and jewelries and running around, we did not know the dream of Pharaoh was knocking. That if you do not know this today, you look at Africa and you will almost not remember that gold was taken out of here. That all kinds of things were taken out of here. There are musicians that did not know what to do with their seven years of plenty. If you mention that name, there were names in ministry, in music. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. If you mention them, they were synonymous to honor. But they did not know what to do with seven years of plenty. And right now, those vicious cows, he said, Pharaoh, what you have seen will surely happen. This is why God showed you. This dream will look for every church. This dream will look for every celebrity. This dream will look for every human being. You don't have to pray. You don't have to be righteous. You don't have to be a sinner. You just have to be on earth. Once you are on earth, I guarantee you, the dream of Pharaoh is coming. What is it about a dream that God will have to repeat it twice? Pharaoh, wake up. He goes back to bed. He has the same dream again. Joseph said, What you have seen will surely come to pass. To everything. Is that in your Bible? To how many things? <laughs> to everything. To your desire. To your relevance. To your name. To your impact. To everything. There is a season now when you read the bible don't read just to look for a message to preach to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven above heaven we don't know what happens there but under heaven to everything that means if you do not understand times and seasons look up please ladies and gentlemen you may be well meaning you may be well intentioned but you will live the rest of your life in pain and regret there are so many people moving around life and saying life is not fair this is not fair i used to be a sincere man of god i served god with all my life now look at is this the lot of a christian they say there are many people who say, I, I did everything I knew. Why should life treat me this way? My brother, my sister, it is not unique to you. It is a mystery that you have not been taught. And tonight God is opening you. That it is not something unique that just looks for you. It's looking for every man. So seven years. Seven does not always mean seven. Seven just, is just a prophetic representation. The lesson is that there is a law that works upon this earth. That there will always be an interplay in every man's life of seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. It was the mistake of the five virgins 
they were all virgins but the foolishness or wisdom was the issue and the bible says some carried extra oil why extra because they knew that there's something about seasons in every man's life these two seasons will continue to alternate themselves for as long as you live on earth you may not be able to stop the seasons but we'll be going there shortly the mystery to handle those seasons and reign through them was the interpretation of joseph's dream joseph's dream was not a solution to pharaoh alone joseph's dream was the spirit of revelation speaking to a young hebrew boy to the inhabitants of the earth that regardless seasons you are going to be able to stand many couples do not know that these seasons come in marriage too and so they are happy enjoying themselves husband is happy with wife this gentleman this my dear people who came and testified you saw how he didn't want his wife to fall down passion <laughs> except this is not bad news don't be scared ladies and gentlemen but that there are seasons every time you see a fat cow let it remind you that there is a lean one also the gentleman said he got an alert that's a fat cow the footballer was signed to a club site that was paying him millions he forgot his age was growing growing into the season of lean cows he forgot oh esther do not forget that vashti gave way for you to be there if you do what vashti did you will shift too but if you do what esther did you will still remain i am amazed at people's lack of discernment during the first part of pharaoh's dream let me tell you the season of abundance write this down the seven years of plenty write it please the seven years of plenty represents seasons of ease seasons of opportunity seasons of access opportunity the key word is opportunity seven years of abundance represents seasons of opportunity that according to the law of time and chance everybody on the face of the earth according to the goodness of god must encounter seasons in your life where things will work well listen to me carefully it is more than praying for things to work well the character of God necessitates that sometime in your life there will be a manifestation of his benevolence, his good hand. Seven years of plenty represent seasons and moments of ease. Represent moments of opportunity. What opportunity? An opportunity to know God. An opportunity to build relationships. An opportunity to understand your assignment. An opportunity to be helped. Those are seasons of plenty. Some of you, God saved at a platter of gold. Someone went out of the way, paid your transport fare, dragged you to church, ensured that you had the message, followed up on you. Those are seasons of plenty. I assure you it will not always be like that there are some of you whether you give or not there is a harvest coming from the sacrifice of your parents yes listen to me the deception of many young people so when we are teaching on the principles that bring these things you say nonsense I just got an alert before service hundred thousand as a student what is this guy talking about you have forgotten that for every fat cow there is a lean one coming all of a sudden at 26 years you got a job with cbn you got a job 
as a diplomatic person receiving 300,000. Let me tell you this. The seasons of abundance have a side effect. They can give you a short-term memory. It, 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 it erodes your ability to think far. You see, when you are in the season of plenty, you can never imagine scarcity. I'm not talking of finances. Who would have imagined that a day will come where the gathering of the saints will have to be suspended for a while? You could drop on a bike and say, I don't like, I thought they'll pray for the sick. Bros, see you later. And the Spirit of God is saying, use this time now. Now that you have brethren to pray, to pray with you. The pain of many people at the latter point in their life is because they are met with a vicious circle of change in their lives. They don't know what to do with. Some say it's an attack. Some say this is unfair. But it is the reality of the dream of Joseph. The deception that comes with the years of plenty is complacency. The deception that comes with seasons of plenty is complacency. Living for the now. Living for the now. There are many people who never believed. They knew they would retire, but they just felt one day, one day. And before you know it, retirement came. No house, no savings, no nothing. Some of you now remember when you were in secondary school. This is you today looking for a job. When you saw those many years ago, 10 years Five years, you were just saying, no, 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 I'm just in demonstration. I'm just in a, a model learning or one of these schools. Pray. You say, no, I'm still a child. My uncle is praying. And the Holy Ghost is saying, build capacity. And now, you are in a position where you will have to trust God. Seven years of plenty will always be followed by seven years of scarcity. It is a law. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. Complacency is the mistake that people make during seven years of plenty. There are men and women of God all around the world today. Once upon a time, their names were household names. You, you couldn't have a convention without those people. That convention is not there. But today, you barely can even know they were alive. I went to preach somewhere and I saw someone I used to know that person or know about that person and I was shocked and surprised when I saw that person in the congregation it made me to think about my own life it was a shadow I've had the privilege to travel and to meet a few people who were household names in different areas and sometimes you look at them and you cannot imagine. Have you seen politicians like that? When they won election, they didn't know what to do with the seven years of plenty. They were just sitting and elder statesmen said, we want you to become counselor. We want you to be, they don't even know how much the form costs. They just said, feel it. They became counselors and they enjoyed themselves until they lost the next election. And they reduced back to nothing. My brothers and my sisters, lay hands on your head in one minute. And I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, open my eyes. For the sake of my children, for the sake of my family. Don't let the devil lie to you that this message is not for you. I assure you, for as long as you are alive on this earth, one day you will need this message. Please pray. Those following online, I'd like you to pray. Lord, give me wisdom. Shela bakato brande gedas, emprota sila hashkala brande gabaruisia. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus, write this down. Seven years of famine represent seasons of constraint, seasons of inconvenience, seasons of scarcity. Seven years of famine represent seasons or moments of constraint moments of inconvenience 
moments of scarcity for various reasons it can be because of age age no matter how anointed you are no matter what revelation you catch about long life the reality is for as long as you are carrying this mortal body until immortality swallows up this mortality you will not always have that energy no you can reduce your age reduce it times keep slashing it into two for as long as you're on earth a day will come you will come to that reality you want to jump the stairs like before with energy and find out that wow what is this strange breath that i'm taking i used to run marathon when when so people like pele and people like all these athletes will sit in the stadium and watch their former self and and remember that free kick and remember what they did unfortunately seasons are gone sports stars would be invited with prestige to the same stadium that they once went with honor and now they would sit down what of former presidents once upon a time they were the voice of their territories everything they said became law and now you see them moving some sick some not totally whole and they sit down and watch oh there is a lesson for us to learn today young beautiful lady look at the person who gave birth to you and learned wisdom once upon a time mama was fine like you too are we together now listen carefully young men that jump around and will not sit down in one place and deal with their destiny look at the man that gave birth to you he was more agile than you he became serious at age 20 yet he's still trying to catch up till today and you you got born again at age 30 that means you need grace mercy speed restoration all these forces of of the spirit to back you up once upon a time our parents used to tell us that you could go to buy something outside if the owner were not there you can pick the thing and drop the money there and they'll come and find it there you had a chance where everybody around your life then was a trusted person you didn't utilize that time everybody who was your roommate was a prayer warrior you didn't utilize that chance now everybody in your office hates you and you have to live there for a very long time seven years of plenty will always follow seven years of famine due to age due to increase increased responsibilities look up please our society is full of regrets of all kinds many elderly people go to their graves in pain there are many books written as a warning to generations coming to say don't make the mistake i made now the key to sustained impact and relevance write it down since it is true that seasons change and that things by themselves will never be the way they always are we must know what to do there is a key and that key is in the advice of joseph let pharaoh look for a discerning and a wise man and put him in charge of the land of egypt what for let pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land and pharaoh take a fifth of the harvest 20 percent a fifth part of the harvest during the seven years of abundance uh -huh. they should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food 36 this food should be held in reserve for the country to be used to be used you will eat the food but not now keep it a day will come that food will be relevant he says to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon egypt so that the country may not be ruined i can't stop the famine 
but there is a technology to make sure that even in famine i can still eat as though there were no famine is that good news for someone that there is still a way you can manipulate your way through seasons and you will remain transgenerationally relevant kings will come and go events will come and go but at the end of it you are still standing the mystery is joseph's advice 37 the plan seemed good to pharaoh and to all his officials uh-huh so pharaoh asked them can we find anyone like this man that means the men who walk this path are scarce it's a question can we find these people in koinonia who can manage the seasons of plenty can god find this kind of man in you in whom there is the spirit of god then pharaoh said to joseph since god has made this known to you there is no one so discerning and wise as you now the bible tells us that he became you know he became in charge of all of those things he now married you know Potiphera and so on and so forth but here's the point we're going back there later on the point is this Joseph gave an advice look up please he said every time you have that harvest there is a part of that harvest that has an ability to still be alive in the moments of famine take part of your fame take part of your energy Take part of your access. Take part of your honor. The days when the honor is there. He says save and invest. Be careful. Make sure you do not part yourself too much and too long. After the giant strides. It is good to encourage yourself. It is good to encourage those you lead. It is good to encourage those you mentor. But beware of prolonged celebration of success. It can be dangerous. It can switch you to the other side of the pendulum and become the reason for failure. When Jesus rose up from the dead, you will imagine that you would go to Potiphar's, I mean to, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name now? Herod and all those people and say where are those stupid people that thought I won't come back to life no when he came back to life straight after doing a few things he went straight to the disciples who were hiding in the upper room and began to teach them for the next 40 days he didn't have time to waste no 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 I've been enthroned no problem the creation will celebrate me later is this not how champions live as soon as they win one Olympic while the whole world is using their face to market products and make money they rest a bit and their coach is a stand up stand up say ah coach i just won he said, uh -uh. let's begin to prepare for the years that will come because there is a new there is a new competitor that was now born until then you are you are getting old but there is a young boy isn't it amazing have you seen just from the field of sports notice all those who defeat champions they are ordinary people who come with zeal and while they are praying their champions stand and say no they can't be anybody more than me and suddenly you will see a teenager just arise and do something that will surprise them there are seasons jesus said i must walk the works of him who sent me even jesus when he walked upon the earth, he added timing and urgency to his life. While it is day, for the night coming where no man can walk again. The seven years of abundance. Look at me. Dear preacher, it will not always be like that, that the whole world will keep giving you invitations every day. Keep coming. It's not because you are backsliding. It's because there will always be another generation. You are not the only one God anointed. There are people who are rising too. Oh, Elijah, do not forget that there are other prophets under Obadiah's custody. They will also arise. Oh, businessman, you may be great, but one time uh, there is a Zuckerberg on his way coming. There is a Google on his way coming. Whoever knew that you have billionaires under 30 today, it was something not to even think about. Whoever knew that technology would take young people to that point where young boys today, media is almost the new government. They can shut a president. Did you ever think like that? 
that if, if, if the owner of a media house can have the power to say I use my influence and my platform and I shut your voice the seven years of influence the seven years of relevance came to an end next verse 54 let's walk fast please media help us and the seven years of famine began just as joseph had said there was famine in all the other lands hallelujah but in joshua selman's life but in koinonia there was food so the presence of food does not mean famine is not still on it's just that something was done So I can do something about these seasons. The seven years of famine began. Then the lockdown began. And there was no church for five months. Then the lockdown began. And your business did not have patronage. The lockdown was not your fault. But it still happened. I told you it's a law. Then all of a sudden, your husband began to have pressure from his place of work. Because the promotion that was due him would not be given. And in reaction to that, he started bringing that attitude back home. Woman of God, what did you store for the days of famine? Suddenly, on account of your integrity, they relieved you from the job. Just when your last twins were born, now you are watching two children plus two others that you have and you are wondering what do i do i don't have money was money the only thing you saved why didn't you save relationships why didn't you store connections why didn't you store prayer why didn't you store the deposit of favor what happened to these qualities whoever told you grains are the only things that can be invested are we together it says there was famine in the land but in egypt there was food when all egypt go back to 55 let's go there when all egypt began to feel the famine the people cried unto pharaoh for food then pharaoh told all the egyptians go and meet the man that knows what to do meet the man that took advantage of my dream so when there is famine there are people they look for and if you are one of those people it is your key to remaining relevant not every when there is rain they will always look for noah when there is hunger they will always look for elijah when there is famine they will always look for joseph you remain relevant by becoming that man that people can come to when there is famine it says go and meet them that sell there are people who have it they cried unto pharaoh and pharaoh said go and meet joseph and do what he tells you to do two more verses when the famine had spread over all the country joseph opened the storehouses notice he never gave them free i like him because in times of famine you don't give free there is a price for those who did not obey pharaoh's dream hey look up you can be listening to free message now you didn't pay for anything yours is just to come and sit down ushers clean the chair worship team sings for you you cough and someone is there to say sorry don't worry it will not always be like that dear ones receive it and consume it with all your heart because when that time comes when the storehouse is open i promise you it will not be free again a day will come you will listen to the same message you ignored while there is a fight going on somewhere a day will come you will listen to that message but it will not be under this kind of convenience again once upon a time areas of palestine and the rest these were places where mighty things happen but today you want to call upon the name of jesus on those soils it may be at the expense of your life a day will come you will have to pay for the food that is now free 
you will pay with your time you will pay with your energy listen to me when god is telling you understand the dynamics of healing and health you may say what for pay attention to it so that if the devil tries to bring any evil report when you are 40 when you are 50 suddenly you begin to feel one kind of pain and like the gentleman they come and tell you you have one year to leave did you save anything for those days you can draw from the archives of your spiritual investment and with confidence you can say i i have no business with the grave the fullness of my days i will fulfill look at it it says joseph opened the storehouses and sold grain to the egyptians i thought they saved it for them there is no record in the bible that pharaoh stopped them from saving their own and there is no record that they saved their own they sat down crossed their legs and said don't worry joseph is saving it for us prayer department is praying for me don't worry i know apostle he doesn't sleep in the night he's interceding for me but i assure you the day those grains will be opened the warehouse there will be a cost it will no longer be free are we together did you know once upon a time i had so much access i mean people could just come any day any time you could meet me on the road and today you can imagine sometimes i get to pray for people and i see my own people and i'm touched i'm looking at you you are looking at me but we can't touch ourselves again there are people who god sent they got 180 something in jam god still gave them admission for five years they were roaming around abu loitering around until their final year when they finally said let me just come for this miracle service and they graduated in tears and some of them right now they are where they are and every friday they must buy data and listen to something they would have listened free their roommates today are already in ministry some of them already have churches and it's now they are answering the call it's not too late but it will not be as easy as it was it's like going to secondary school at age 45 no knowledge is a waste but chances are you'll be sleeping because at that level both your life and your mind there are responsibilities there is nobody in that class that should be a father but now you are no knowledge is a waste but it will not come at that platter of gold are we together for the famine was so severe throughout egypt the last verse and let me build on some things and we pray read it please together one to read and all the countries came to egypt to buy grain from who because the famine was severe i thought it was just egypt from joseph's dream did he say the interpretation did he mention world there i thought it was just egypt so it's a law that happens to all men other countries who didn't have the dream still suffered it so others were just eating they didn't know that it was one year left for famine to start and famine came and all of a sudden the kings who call themselves and say we are dying buy us money has failed all of a sudden news started going and said there is a young hebrew boy in egypt there is so much abundance in egypt and they started running the bible says gentiles will come to your light are you seeing now and their kings because of the extent of the famine they will discern that it is true men are saying there is a casting down but i don't know what is happening to this group of people for them it looks like there is a lifting up that when people are saying god what shall become the lot of our lives you are giving and you are blessing when you are 50 years you will say i know god more now than i did even in my youth i have more time for him now and they say why is your life like this you say because i was taught the mystery of pharaoh's dream when the lord taught me this mystery i got down my knees and i cried before him and i said thank you lord for your love for me i have found the key i have found the key our fathers turned their back and allowed us to see their scars 
And now that we have been privileged to see it, we can know that by the grace of God, we will rise, we will remain, and at the end of time, even with honor, it will be that the name of the Lord continues to be lifted in and through our lives, whether we are here or not. Transgenerational relevance. There was something Jesus did that even though it's been ages, the name of Jesus still continues to be lifted. You will go to countries and even at the edge of a sword, there are people who would stand and pledge for him. What happened that the name cannot go down? What, what did Jesus do? I want to show you something now. What happened? Because if you do that same thing, for some of you, the name of your family will remain forever. Do you know there are families that the moment maybe the children get married, the name, the honor, name there does not just mean the, the title. There was an honor that was upon the families, but they did not know what to do. And right now, it is shame, it is reproach. I rebuke that over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. What do you do during seasons of opportunity? Let me give you four keys. How to maximize your seven years of abundance. Number one, what do you do during seasons of abundance? Build capacity. Number one, build capacity. Spiritual capacity. Intellectual capacity. Build capacity. The days of abundance are not days of over-celebration. The days of abundance are not the days to be carried away by the flatteries of men. I've told you, there is a weakness in men. There is something that honor does to us. There is something that celebration does to us. When you become a superstar or you aspire to become a superstar, I am telling you there is a side effect. The side effect is that it makes us short term in our memory. We, we fail to think. Now that you have time, now that you have someone giving you pocket money, now that you are still employable, you have not retired yet. It looks like you have 25 years left. It looks like you have 20 years, you have 15 years, you have 10 years. 10 years looks like a lot of time until you see what comes with it. That's the time to build spiritual capacity. You are praying. You are a student, for instance, you still have time. There's no reason to go and be celebrating nonsense and be wasting your time. No. The little time you have, you are studying. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things. You are listening to teachings. You are spiritualizing your mind. You are getting materials, buying books, not shoes not clothes leave those things they will follow you when you are transformed focus on your transformation the money that young people waste on useless things things that have no profit as far as the future is concerned if you can be patient that money multiples of it will look for you a thousand times The days of abundance are not the days to look for invitation. I am a music minister. Please invite me. I am a man of God. God called me to be an apostle and a prophet. Be patient. There are so many sermons you are going to preach in your life. You will need grace. Go right now and be obtaining the grace. Don't be running around looking for the invitation. Build capacity. Build capacity. That's what you do during times of abundance. Build capacity, capacity to last, capacity to defend the grace that is now given to you. Get knowledge, get knowledge. Don't be a local champion, get knowledge. Number two, what do we do with our seasons of opportunity? Number two, build relationships. Oh, write that in capital letter. Write that in capital letter. Build relationships. Productivity and fruitfulness are relational. Woe betides you if you do not have anybody to help you 
during your season of famine. There are families today, everything they eat is what they worked for. Everything they wear is what they bought. Everywhere they go, they go is where they took themselves to. No, 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 it should not be like that. Relationships are powerful. They are advantageous connection. They are systems of leverage. There has to be somebody in your life who likes you enough to be able to invest their time, their reputation, their credibility on your destiny. Are we blessed? Yes, sir. I don't have capital. Capital is not the only thing. Relationships can pay. I met a gentleman one time and he told me something. He said, I don't know what one of these schools in Africa, and he said that he had been looking for school fees to, to collect his certificate accumulated. I think their school, they allowed them to pay to steal school like student loans. And he needed a total of, let's say, three to 500,000 to go and collect his certificate since 2016. And while he was telling me, he sounded sympathetic. And I told him from 2016 till today, didn't you have classmates? Didn't you go to church? Did everybody fail who you used to know? You mean nobody out of the hundreds of people that God gave you the privilege of relationship with. You did not bless anybody enough to remember you. There are people, what is 300,000? What is 400,000 for someone? It is painful to know someone who is not willing to help you because you trivialize relationships. Hear me, dear ones. Some of you will be in departments. Some of you will be in your faculty. You will see people whose shoes are not, are not something to write home about. And you ignore them. You are looking for only your tribesmen. You are looking for only those you used to know. And yet your heart is not open to discern what God is doing. A few years down the line, those people will be CEOs and multi-millionaires. You will not evolve out of somewhere and come and say, bless me. Based on what? There are so many people today claiming portions of people's successes based on my father used to know you. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. Build relationships. Relationships are costly investments. It will cost you your ego. It will cost you your time. It will cost you your sacrifice. Can I tell you this? There are people who will never suffer in this life as far as this life is concerned. If they don't give their life to Christ, for instance, except they go to hell. But as far as this life is concerned, they, they have connected themselves to too many people who will never forget them. I met a gentleman I used to know years ago. I was so happy to see him. How are you? Greeted me. We exchanged pleasantries. What are you doing now? Sir, this and that. I said, really? And then I remember. I said, no, 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 no. You shouldn't be in this position. Cut the long story short. God lifted that person and exalted that person overnight. There are some prayers you will not need to pray if you understand relationships. It's a covenant. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? There are some of us, the way you are going with your life now, the truth is that you have already secured the destiny of your children. People will love you too much. Every time they see you, they remember the quality of your relationship. And they will say, over my dead body. There are people today who will never be stranded of house rent. There are people today, even if you decide to be lazy, your relationship has placed you on honor and salary forever. Everybody likes me. Think well now, in light of what I'm teaching. It's a window that will not always be open. You invest in relationships. The person will remember the day that he came late and you got up and said, please sit down. Ah, no, 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 I came late for Koinonia. No, sit down. I can stand. You will think he has forgotten you. You just carry 20% of your time and invested it. Are you seeing now? Yes, sir. After Koinonia, someone is going home, broke, and the Holy Ghost tells you it's just 70 naira. Please pay for bike for this man. Sir, can I pay for bike for you? I don't know you. Who are you? No, Koinonia here. Just to bless you. 
and you pay that 70,000, uh, that 70 naira, and you don't know that that 70 naira is an estate you just paid. After 10 years, he will see you and your wife and your children. Listen to me. And he will say, I remember you. Sheo, are you not the one in, you say, Zari, I say, what are you doing now? I say, well, God is faithful. He say, come, God has helped me today. Please come, let me give you one place. I'm giving you, listen, this, this wisdom key will bless you for the rest of your life. There are some of you, you are not represented in anybody's story. Anybody's story. Nobody can make reference to you to say you prayed for me. While I was looking for someone to pray for, you were there. You were not there. While my child was crying, 10 naira, uh, what, what they, this thing they give children? Um, Bobo, you did it, you just watched the child. Uh, how, why do children cry like this? You are subtracting. Let me tell you what you are doing. Listen, listen, listen. Take me very serious. You are subtracting from the years of abundance. You hear someone is getting married, God gives you 100,000, you can't take 10,000 and say, look, just to bless you. Can I tell you, when you make efforts to sincerely be friendly from a pure heart, you are making investments for your tomorrow. There is something that being blessed does. It gives you the ease to be a blessing. And not everybody will struggle forever. The person you are seeing who cannot eat today, tomorrow he will get to a point where well to become like, like the sands of the seashore. And at that point, all that will be left is who do I need to bless? Not will I bless. There are people today, every day, they are giving houses in this country. There are people giving jobs in this country. No interview. There are some of us, the names of our parents are keys. It can open any door. There are some of us, the names of our parents are padlocks. They look at your name and say, which one? It's all right. Uh, you go, you hear from us. And yet you're a first class student. You must make up your mind that your name will become a key to your child. There are children today who are head boy, head girl, regard, even if they are not taking first position. Because something about the relationship of their father and the principal is his school. He can do whatever he wants to do with his school. Look at me. Who is in your life now sincerely helping you? Why do you have to call people before they help you? Calculate your age. Who sees you as what he's, he's helping today? There are many preachers. They love God. They are born again. They focus on God, but they ignore men. You pay for the speaker yourself. You pay for the keyboard yourself. You are getting married. Even the committee of friends, they come together and you have to pay them again. What sort of a, a, a human being are you? No. Make up your mind from tonight that you are going to invest in relationships. You don't need many, but the few that you have. Your roommates may be there. You are the only person who is privileged among them. Keep hiding your food. You don't know what you are doing to yourself. Are we together? Keep washing your plates alone. You don't know what you are doing. Don't, don't follow all this nonsense that people do in films and movies. It would destroy you. Those people are active. Go through the sacrifice now. Look like a fool now. There is a kind of business where you don't sell anything. You give like a mad person. But the returns are guaranteed. It's the business of men. Your roommate comes back with five carryovers. As if he returned from a funeral. You are the first to say you are an embarrassment to redemption. You continue. He will remember you in the future. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. One day you'll be a doctor. It's all right. Things happen in life. And regardless what it is, don't worry. Where will I get the last school fees now? I'm in final year. I'm having to spill over. My father will kill me. Look, there's a little scholarship I used to collect. It's not much. It's 100,000. I can spare 20,000 from it. It may not do you much, but let it encourage you. You did this for me from a sincere heart. After 10 years, your 20,000 has grown into honor. As that man rises, your 20,000 makes you rise too. You never knew your 20,000 was a living thing. 
I show you why many people never rise. Look at great men. For some of you who have had the privilege to work with great men, their lives are purely based on history and based on relationship. Look at politicians. There are sons and daughters today who become governors, who become senators, not because of any capacity. I remember you. They were about to shoot me in 1981. I remember. And they laugh. Retired generals. And they are all laughing. So what are you doing now? My son wants to get this. Oh, don't worry. Hello, sir. We found the person. Please give this person. And you are there praying. And your prayer request right on earth, right in your presence, was given to someone. May God deliver us from ignorance. See, as I'm talking to you now, there are some of you, you are seeing why you hate your family. Don't hate your family, but learn from the mistakes. They had opportunities. And yet they wasted it. They insulted everybody around them. You had a house help. The house help who wake up by five. You had names that you would give her. Stupid girl, where are you, ma? She will come. Whereas that's the person who would deliver you in old age. And the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do this. She will come, madam, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw you crying in the future. Is you are the witch that this is... <clears throat> You beat the girl and it's, it's remnants of food you give her. There's a special plate. Plates that they gave her souvenir for wedding. Where are you? Yeah, come and take your own. And the girl is eating with gratitude. And you do not know that time and chance happens to them all. One day, one correct born again man who fears God with fire and wealth will now come and not even see your children. Will now see that one and say, I like this one. Say, sorry. Um... I'm not sure you know what you are saying. There are others say no. I, my heart has seen what I like. We die here. Who we'll carry? Listen. I spoke about relationship, and you are now excited for nothing. Sit down. Are we together? God will use that man to carry that young girl and wipe the tears of her generation, not just her family. Whereas someone likes you and says, tell me about your mother. I've had that story before. So she's the one. I will never marry you till Jesus comes. Why must we do this kind of thing for ourselves? There are some of our loved ones who had the opportunity to give jobs to people. Did they give them jobs? No. They were in positions where they would have the names of 100 people. They didn't have anybody until one day stroke hits them and now the company had to retire them why do you want people to bless you when you didn't raise anybody don't you know when you raise people it's a cushion for your own self there are music artists today who did not raise anybody they ate alone as god was lifting them other younger ones were coming and say listen to my song you say what is this I received it by the Spirit. He said, no, it's not the Holy Ghost that gave this kind of songs. Instead of you to encourage the person, don't worry. You can rise. Listen to me. I want to open your eyes tonight to see that some of you, what you are doing is that you are not investing your 20% for the years that are coming. There is nobody in your life who you bless intentionally. You are just expecting people to bless you. No. We have many children in Koinonia here. Which one have you ever bought something and told the mother, be blessed? We have many people in school here, young people. Some of them, their school fees is 1,000, 2,000. You see the, the foolishness we do? Valentine comes, you see people acting like fools. They do all kinds of things. Waste money that even the girl's parents have never given her. And yet there are people here. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm waking you up. There has to be someone who will tell you this thing. Fake lives for nothing. You are a student. You are dressing like a CEO. You are not there. Buying expensive things whereas you would have used that money. Buy five books on prayer. Find people that you see God already lifting them. Sir, this is, I thought this would bless your life. 
One day you are in a restaurant and you see someone arguing, almost getting embarrassed because of 10 naira. Show up quickly. That's an opportunity for an investment in the future. And say, sir, don't worry. I don't know you, but I've seen your face going on. Oh, really, please. Let me have the honor to bless you. You sit down in the car. You just get an alert of 10,000. And the transport fare is just 200 naira. An opportunity to sow into your life. By the grace of God, this is one thing I did with my life. And I thank God for it today. Because the person who may not be able to help you yesterday, certainly will be able to help you tomorrow. Is God blessing us? Let's hurry up. What do you do with your seasons of opportunity? Number one is build capacity. Number two is build relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming lives. I think I already stated that. Acts chapter 9, please, quickly, just to add scriptures to it. Selflessly invest in blessing and transforming lives. This is what you should do with your seasons of abundance. Selflessly, the word, the key word is selfless. Selflessly invest. Let me tell you this. During your seasons of plenty, forget about yourself. Be of less importance less importance pour your heart into people not because you are expecting something in return sincerely pay the price to build people pay the price to be part of the stories of people acts chapter 9 from verse 36 help us media we're reading to 42 now watch this Peter came to a place in Joppa. The Bible says in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. Look up, please. Which when translated is Dorcas. The Bible says who was always doing what? Talk to me, please. She was always doing good and helping the poor. She had an opportunity. She never allowed the poor like that. She did good and she helped the poor. 37. About that time, Aha, uh -huh. here you have come again. Time. She became sick and died. And her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. 38. Leader was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Leader, they sent two men to him and urged him, Come please at once. Peter went with them and when he arrived, look at this, look at this, look at this. When he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. Hallelujah. Look at those who gathered. All the people she invested in. All the widows stood around him doing what? Crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made for them while she was still with them. While that woman was alive, she would not see poor people go like that. I may not have much, but let me add a smile to you. When she died, the widow said, no way. No way. They stood and said, Peter, do something. The widows provoked this anointing. And they said, this woman, who will now do it for us? This was the woman who was there for us. May you have someone who speaks for you. Oh. May you have someone who speaks for you. In the name of Jesus, may you have someone who can speak for you and bring to remembrance what you have done for the kingdom. Peter, provoked by their tears, he sends them all out of the room and he got down on his knees. He didn't stand to pray this kind of prayer. He knelt down and turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. And she opened her eyes. Kebala Subranda Kaskubiata. She would have died like that and he would have finished. But something about her investing in lives. He said, I shall not die but live and declare. There is a way you are so useful to kingdom come. That is not only God that will pray for your longevity. Men too will say, may God leave you for us. Can I tell you this? Help them please. Listen, there are people today, look at me. There are people today, the goodwill of men is almost like prophecy on their lives. Do you know that goodwill carries power? Whether born again or not. The woman that tries Akara, her blessing is on you. 
the one who sells bread his blessing is on you my mother you do not know her blessing is on you then there is the prophetic blessing on you then there is one who you visited during your birthday this this myriads of blessings you think they don't matter one boss man somewhere may not be born again but he told you let it be well with you i tell you heaven honors it there are people who when you see them rise it's not just a product of their personal work with god alone they are surrounded by the goodwill of people learn this lesson tabitha no you can't go like that who then will feed the widows my life today by the grace of god is surrounded by intercessors all over the world some who have been called by god and others who are benefactors of things by his grace that i have done for them who have vowed in life let me tell you this there are people today if you carry a gun to kill me not everybody but there are people who will stand and receive it and die first it is over their dead body may you have such people in your life it does not happen by being a man of god it happens through the sacrifice of investment if baba deboye today lifts his hand and says, people my car just spoiled what do you think is going to happen many car stands will be emptied because one man who grew with a generation passionately pouring his heart to them a life of selfishness let them do it for me is a recipe for pain in the days that are coming I remember many years ago I went to preach somewhere and I saw that the ministry was struggling really struggling and they put together a little honorarium and I knew that these people don't have this capacity probably they borrowed money just to show honor I called the pastor and his wife I told him I said look I thank you they were crying I said I love you people I just came to bless you I didn't come to receive money I know that you people are working and the Lord gave me an instruction I sowed a dangerous seed for them prayed for them and told them may God bless you till tomorrow those people my, my song is on their lips sometimes they send me text message and they identify themselves as people who I bless this is more than maybe 10 or 11 or 12 years ago who remembers you for what you have done in their lives where are the widows that remember what you are doing for them some of you even your family members can't, re can't remember you because you've not done anything for anybody it is time for change are we together number four what do you do during your seasons of abundance listen the fourth thing you do is study those who have maintained relevance through seasons that's the fourth thing you do study study those who have maintained relevance while you have the time while the dark days have not come pay the price study those who have gone ahead of you who have survived seasons hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience follow them hebrews 6 12 it says to follow them who through faith and patience go back to kjv have obtained the promise a man who is celebrating 40 years in ministry celebrating 35 years in ministry 45 years in ministry even if that person was playing i think you can't play for 35 years you can't play for 45 years herein lies the arrogance of our generation we insult people who have gone ahead of us we downplay the sacrifices of successful people Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, do not talk about anybody's results until you have twice that result. There are people who have not built anything. They have not raised anybody in their lives. But there is no man of God they will not talk about all across the globe. No. It ought not to be so. respect results and respect people who god has honored to get results the kingdom's way are we together study them study them 
you know in your world you will always think you know until you see a horizon that is higher than that let me show you one person who utilized these seasons very well luke chapter 16 very quickly please from verse 1 and the disciples and he said unto his disciples look up please there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods so the rich man was angry at his stewards <laughs> and he called him and said unto him how is it that i hear this of thee give an account of thy stewardship for thou mayest no longer be steward verse 3 and then the steward said to himself jesus is teaching now what shall i do for my lord take it away from me the stewardship i cannot dig and to beg i am ashamed so what is his strategy i am resolved what to do that when i am put out of the stewardship they may receive me into their houses you hear the man thinking now jesus is teaching verse 5 what did he do <laughs> he called every one of his lord's debtors and said unto the first how much owest thou you my lord verse 6 and he said a hundred measures of oil and he said take the bill sit down quickly and write 50. watch what this guy is doing now the wisdom this is somebody who is not born again he has seen trouble come and he knows that ah, if they drive me from this estate i don't have anything so let me quickly do something with these relationships and he said to another how much owest thou and he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said unto him take thy bill and write 80. and the lord commended the unjust steward now god was not teaching to cheat he was just saying the man had sense to know that he could lean on those relationships because seasons were about to change in his life are you getting the morale now he commanded the he commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light nine and i say to you make yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness that when ye fail they shall receive you into everlasting habitations what this means is not teaching you to go after money or go after all of these things the idea is that use your seasons of plenty as a leverage the moment you have fame you have blessings they pay you your salary you get some arrears don't eat everything alone remember to edge your impact in someone's life so that tomorrow you can have people who can stand by you stand with you support you support your family and help you if all you have in your life is your intellect if all you have in your life is your salary if all you have in your life is your business if all you have in your life is you and yourself you'll be in trouble in today's world hallelujah You now understand what God was doing when he told us that we will not sell our teachings. Now please, you're a pastor here. I'm not saying don't sell tapes. That's not what I'm saying. But this is a painful instruction. At the time God gave this instruction, the media ministry was the major, one of the major income generating revenues for ministries at that time. Books and this, aside from offerings and tithes. So that was a suicidal project. I know the quality of the things that I teach by the Spirit. Why would we not sell them to at least generate some revenue for the ministry? And God said, no, it shall not be that way. Put it online and let people have it free. And I said, so be it. My God, my God, fast forward. Whatever God tells you, Ba, He doesn't tell you for today. He tells you for your 10 years, for your 20 years. That's why I call it an investment. There are nations today... There are people today who forever for the rest of my life, the lifetime of this ministry, and many who are connected to this grace, there are certain levels you will not go lower than again. You do not know the extent of the impact that these teachings have brought for people. Obedience. Selflessly giving yourself to the Lord. Lamentations 3. 27 as i conclude the bible says it is good for a man 
that he bear the yoke in his youth that means there is timing for everything bear your yoke now go through the sacrifice now i love you that's why i'm sharing with you this truth examine your life now the idea of me myself it is only me and me and me alone is a recipe for disaster and destruction and let me tell you this if you go and start selecting people to bless because you want something in return you will be surprised that that harvest will still not come the harvest comes not just on the basis of giving but the sincerity of your heart if i give you something today because i'm expecting you to remember me tomorrow is a joke that that is business that's not love